how about in the actual atmosphere, like John Glenn in space, you, Yuri Gagargan, were they actually in space? I doubt it. Were they actually in space? I doubt it. Jarrah, you said that I misrepresented Casing by saying that he believed that the missions before the space shuttle were all fake. And so far, you have not been able to verify this accusation. The quote displayed in Astro Brandt's video is taken out of context. Casing's answer was regarding Yuri Gagarin's flight. He shared Lloyd Mellon's beliefs that various Soviet missions were also fake. Throughout his book, Casing often took this statement by astronaut Wally Shara as gospel. I doubt I could have flown my Mercury and Gemini missions if they had encountered as many foul-ups as Apollo. Further, in 1995, Casing released a VHS adaption of his book, and the back cover reads, Dedicated to one honest astronaut, Virgil Ivan Grissom. Well, folks, if Casing believed Grissom's Liberty Bell 7 and Gemini 3 flights were faked, as Astro Brandt alleges, why would he call him one honest astronaut? Wouldn't he have called him a bald-faced liar, as he did Armstrong and Aldrin, if what Astro Brandt says is true? Astro Brandt knows he's quote mining Bill Casing, because in the very next statement, Casing specifies and makes his answer absolutely clear. Here is the segment in full. Do you believe that rockets ever made orbit? Like, did Surveyor or Pioneer actually happen? Possibly, possibly not. Uh, I'm not absolutely certain about that. I will concede that certain uh, unmanned vehicles might have made it to the moon. The Russians are supposed to have sent some unmanned vehicles to the moon, and possibly our Surveyor did land on the moon but uh, units with people in them, never. How about in the actual atmosphere, like John Glenn in space, Yuri Gagargan, were they actually in space? I doubt it. The, so the Soviet Union faked that Yuri Gagarin was in space and that dog that died, Laika, really didn't die? Mm, I don't think he was up there. See, there was a fellow by the name of Lloyd Mallon in the early 70s who wrote a, a very detailed book uh, saying that uh, all, if, if well, nearly all or possibly all of the Soviet uh, space exploits were faked, and he proved it with photographs and technical data and so forth. I, I still have a copy of that book. Be prepared to uncover a lot of Astro Brandt's quote mining. He does it frequently. I can't find the other place where I have heard him comment on this. Probably because it never existed in the first place. Astro Brandt has taken a statement that Casing made regarding various Russian flights and attributed it to all pre-shuttle flights. You can find the link to the Casing interview on your screen, both in audio and transcribed. I challenge anyone to find any section in which Casing claims that all space travel prior to the shuttle was faked. And I asked you if you believed that Rene had proven Archimedes wrong by stating that a floating object need not displace its mass of water. Your answer was, How many times do I have to say this? Rene did not claim to have disproved Archimedes' principle. He only disagreed with its wording. On page 28 of his skeptic book, he reworded it as, an object floats because the per unit hydraulic pressure due to the height of the surrounding liquid supports the bottom of the floating object. Using straw man versions of Rene's beliefs does not help your cause. To which my answer was, again, bullshit. La -la -la. So Rene can quote from a book. Rene did not quote that statement from anything. He wrote it himself. And just like all the double talk that you did on the relativity question, it can't cover up the fact that he said and believes this. An object does not need to displace its own mass in order to float. This proves only that Rene just does not have any idea what the word displacement means, and apparently neither do you. The statement on Rene's site is used as an example to show how silly the standard wording is. 
Rene admits in his own book that he himself was temporarily confused by the standard wording, but later realised his mistake and argued that the wording should be specified more clearly to avoid this confusion. On page 28, he wrote, It took a few days, but I finally figured out that, contrary to what the physics books state, an object floats because the per unit hydraulic pressure due to the height of the surrounding liquid supports the bottom of the floating object. Philosophers should rewrite their physics books. Again, no double talk, just Astrobrandt misrepresenting Rene's position. Again. Rene's true stance regarding Archimedes' principle has been repeatedly brought to Astrobrandt's attention, yet he continues with his baseless and defamatory argument. Ironically, in his own video, Astro Brandt admits that the word displacement sounds misleading. Even though displacement sounds very much like the amount of water moved out of the way. I brought this up in debate, to which Astro Brandt replied, Yes, displacement does sound misleading to people who don't know one of its meanings, and that is why he screwed up. He went on to claim that displacement was simply a synonym for volume. Well, here's an online thesaurus showing their entry for volume, and the word displacement isn't listed as a synonym. But, since we're playing with words, let's see if I can provide a definite answer to his question on whether Archimedes' principle is correct or not. From Wikipedia, we note its wording is any object, wholly or partly immersed in a fluid, is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. According to this online dictionary, displacement is defined as the act of displacing and the weight or volume of a fluid displaced by a floating or submerged body. And displace means to move or put out of the usual or proper place. Based on these definitions, I can reasonably conclude that Archimedes' principle is not only misleading, it's also incorrect. You can't displace fluid that doesn't exist. Objects are kept afloat by water pressure, not weight displacement. The Archimedes' principle certainly holds true in most situations, just not in a general sense. Hopefully, this answers Astro Brandt's question. Now, you're probably wondering, what does the Electric Universe model, the Equatorial Bulge, the Theory of Relativity, and Archimedes' Principle have to do with the Apollo Moon Hoax Theory? Absolutely nothing. It is no secret that Casing and Rene also were interested in various non-Moon Hoax subjects. Casing with the fact that Pearl Harbor was not the surprise attack that the US government claimed it was, and Rene with his alternative science theories. Now, I'm open to theoretical physics and whatnot, but it was never my intention to do a video on them. That was Rene's fight, not mine. However, propagandists have tried to make it my fight simply because Rene happened to share my beliefs that Apollo was fake. Astro Brandt, S Vector, Fractal Dimensions, and God only knows who else have all falsely accused me of every logical fallacy in the book, when in fact, they are all guilty of the mother of all logical fallacies. Guilt by association. Wikipedia defines the term as, an association fallacy is an inductive formal fallacy of the type of hasty generalization or red herring, which asserts that qualities of one thing are inherently qualities of another, merely by an irrelevant association. The pattern is basically this. The propagandists look for any off-topic and controversial opinion or idea proposed by the conspiracy theorist, and then try to pin it on those who follow them, implying that all these followers must also be promoters of this theory. Even if the said follower isn't interested in the off-topic subject, thinks it's wrong, or isn't sure about it, or whatever, it doesn't matter. They'll pin it on you simply because of your association with the guy. This is a total red herring argument. On his website, Jay Windley claims that one of his teachers was Dr. Edgar Mitchell of Apollo 14. 
Since propagandists seem to imply that I should believe everything Renee and Casing have said, I am amazed that they haven't attacked Jay Windley yet. After all, one of his mentors believes the US government has concealed evidence of alien UFOs.